Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course of Reasoning and Logic, in which we are doing another old exam question. So this old exam question is all about equivalence relations. And for the first question, what we need to do is we need to write down the three properties that an equivalence relation needs to have. So let's see if we remember them. The first property is re not recursion, but it's the idea that for all x, it has the relation with itself. Do you remember what it's called? Reflexivity is the answer. A reflexive relation means that for all x, it has the relation with itself. Second one, something with C, and it meant that for all x, y, if x was in the relation with y, then y was also in the relation with x. It was the notion of symmetry. And finally, something with tra, it's the notion that for all x, y, and z, if x is in a relation with y and y is in a relation with z, well, then x must also be in the relation with z. And it's the notion of transitivity. Transitivity. Spelling is hard, much harder than math which is why I teach logic and not English. Transitivity, there we go. So these are the three properties of uh, an equivalence relation. And we've written here the logically written definition, so question A answered. Good, because that means we can look at the more interesting question B. For the following relation, ah, the word the wasn't there, but for the following relation, describe for each of the properties you gave in question A, whether the relation satisfies that property and why it does or does not. So what is this relation? Two ducks, A and B, are in the relation R if A has more children than B. Interesting, if A has more children than B. So let's check each of these properties. Is the relation reflexive? Well, in order for the relation to be reflexive, we would need a duck, or we would need every duck, to have more children than itself. That's a bit weird, no? In fact, that's quite impossible, meaning that the first statement doesn't hold. Now, think back to one of these other pen cards in which we talk about counterexamples. How do we show that something doesn't hold? We give a counterexample, right? So, okay, consider, oh, let me change the size of my pen. There we go. Consider Donald, who has three kids. Three is not bigger than or equal, or is not bigger than three, strictly more. So, our Donald, comma, Donald, doesn't hold. And that is our counterexample. Right? So we've come up with a very concrete example of a duck who has three kids. Well, three is not bigger than three. And as a result, the relation doesn't hold for Donald with itself, himself, itself, herself, whatever you like. So that's the first statement done, or the first property done. Let's look at symmetry. For all x, y, if x is in a relation with y, then y should be in a relation with x. First, let's think about it again. If x has more kids than y, well, then clearly y does not have more kids than x. So again, this thing is false, which means that we should be able to come up with a counterexample. So consider Lyra with three kids and pan 
with zero. Now R Lyra comma pen holds, but pen Lyra does not. All right, Lyra has more kids than Pen, but Pen does not have more kids than Lyra. So again, we have come up with a concrete counterexample to show that the relation is not symmetric. Finally, let's look at transitive. Two ducks A and B uh, are in a relation if A has more children than B. So if X has more children than Y, and y has more children than z, well, yes, then clearly x must have more children than z as well. Now, we could formally prove this, okay, but we're not asked for a formal proof, so an explanation will do here. And the explanation we can give is something like this. For arbitrary, you notice that I do like to use some words that we often see in a proof. For arbitrary ducks, a, B, C, such that A, B is in the relationship and B, C is in the relationship, it must hold that the number of kids from A, let's call it, let's make it a function N, uh, and let me also move this down so you can actually read it. The number of kids of A must be more than the number of kids of B. And similarly, the number of kids of B must be bigger than the number of kids of C. Ah, so the number of kids of A must be bigger than the number of kids of C. Why? Well, because the greater than relation is transitive. And so this one also holds, or this one also holds, this one holds. So this relation is not reflexive. We came up with a counterexample. It's not symmetric. We came up with a counterexample, but it is transitive. And we give an explanation as to why it holds, namely because of the transitivity of the greater than relation. So there you go. This is an answer that I would really like to see on an exam. You can probably shorten it in some places and still get full marks, but this, is, this at least contains all the elements that I would be happy to see. Now that's all I wanted to discuss with you in this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you around for the next one. Bye for now.